All right, Kate, so I got a uh, text from my dad. It's a link to this story from the Wall Street Journal. Dollar Tree to sell more items above a dollar as costs rise. And his message was, here's an update on prices at Dollar Tree. And uh, Yeah. Did you read the article? Yes, I have. I looked up the article and I read the article. I know on the East Coast, they're starting to have uh, Dollar Trees. uh, I can't remember what they're called. The Dollar Pop Store or something where there are items that are $5, $3, and $1. Right. So it says here in the story that this counter has experimented with selling items for $3 and $5 since 2019 in a shelf section labeled Dollar Tree Plus. Mm -hmm. Those tests continue in a few hundred of its roughly $7,900 Dollar Tree stores. Yeah. And so the new price point they're going to start selling things at, uh, start selling products at $1.25 and $1.50 or other prices slightly above $1 in some of its stores, expanding current tests, selling items at higher price points as supply chain snarls, a tight labor market, and inflation push costs higher. Mm, Sad day. I know. Here I had just learned, after all these years, that everything's a dollar at the Dollar Tree, and here comes the news that... Looks like that uh, probably is going to be changing at your store sometime. Yeah. Shoot. We recognize the need to make adjustments in the current economic environment. The pressure all of us are seeing on wages, freight, and on our suppliers and cost increases. So prices going up, Kate. Come on, Dollar Tree. Have you noticed the uh, prices going up, Kate? My uh, cable bill went up, but that was after my introductory price was done after a year. Um, my... Uh, Trash bills up also. Mm. Inflation's coming. Hit your hit, has it hit the Kate household yet, Kate? Well, I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm gonna have to restrict my trips to the Dollar Tree now, or I'm gonna have to like really. Do I want to spend an extra twenty five cents or fifty cents on that item? Hmm. I know. Yeah, I. <laughs> You're not doing detailed accounting at home. We're like, wait a minute. That no. loaf of bread. Okay. Nope. Probably should be. I bought some bacon from Sam's from the app. Oh, okay. And I was thinking it was the bacon that we'd previously purchased where it was like a giant box where it just like white box and it says bacon in black letters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's so good. Uh, but instead this was like, because I figured the price point was like, this is the bacon that we've purchased before but it was not near as much bacon so i was like oh gosh monty save this bacon for when the queen comes over because this was expensive bacon (laughs) what's so good about it i don't know the but it's i can't remember the brand but it's not as much as like that three pound box that's you know not labeled anything other than like bacon yeah yeah there's way less bacon in it so Yeah, you can kind of tell how good of a deal you're getting on a product based on the packaging it comes in. Right. Like, right. We can't afford to put any color printing on this box. Are you nuts? Are you kidding me? Yeah. So it was being a little distracted while I was online grocery shopping and I ended up spending fifteen dollars on bacon. That's not very much bacon. No. Uh, so yeah, it's got it's special occasion bacon. That's what it's going to be. Yes. <laughs> is it infused with like hickory or something like that? It's no, because got- I wouldn't have bought it. <laughs> but it was just, I thought it was the bacon that we get based on the price, but it was a different picture. So I thought, hmm. Premium cut. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe it was from like Porky Pig. I don't know. Yeah. I hate buying the wrong thing. I know. And then you don't notice until you get home because they load it in the back of the car and you're like, Oh, that's not what I wanted. Shoot. And it's my fault. I still have vanilla Greek yogurt that I mistakenly bought and I just ended up putting in the freeze instead because the packaging was so similar to just the plain yogurt. Now, do you not like the vanilla Greek? Uh, It's just extra calories and weird flavoring. Okay. The, The regular stuff does me right, so there's no need to throw 20 extra calories per serving in there, Kate. Oh, Matt. Uh, my kids like vanilla Greek. Oh, yeah? That's, yeah. They will They will eat vanilla Greek. They will 
Um, they're weird about fruit in their yogurt. I shouldn't say they. Elliot's weird about her fruit in her yogurt. She likes to put fruit in her yogurt. She doesn't like fruit already in the yogurt. Yeah, I understand that. But they also haven't figured out that Greek yogurt is sour. So I just, you know, keep buying them Greek vanilla. Have you tried it? Yeah, it's disgusting. Okay. I knew you weren't really a Greek yogurt fan. No. And so your children haven't yet figured out that they don't like it is what you're saying? Right. They haven't figured out it's disgusting. So they keep eating it. Oh, uh, so why are you buying it? Because it's a healthy food item for the children to enjoy? Yeah, it's the best yogurt on the shelf for kiddos. You know, instead of like all those, I would love if Gogurt were a little bit more healthy because that's perfect. It's yogurt in a tube. You can freeze it. It's a popsicle. It's easy. Yeah, but there's a lot of sugar in it. Yeah, that's what I thought. Gogurt. So I get them the Greek vanilla. And they haven't figured it out. So don't tell them. (laughs) They haven't figured it out. They haven't figured it out that Greek yogurt is supposedly better for you than regular yogurt. And they Mm -hmm. also haven't figured out that it tastes bad. Bad, bad, bad. Okay. Yeah. So what are you going to do with your yogurt? It's just sitting in your freezer? Yeah, it's sitting in my freezer. I figure it's a break glass if needed yogurt. You know, break glass in case of emergency. (laughs) I don't know. maybe Maybe something will... Makes sense to make down the line with it. I don't know. I don't know. But I have noticed it a couple times when I'm like, man, this freezer's kind of full. And it's like, oh, that yogurt's still in here too. Hmm. 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 Yeah. Would your mom or daddy did? I, I don't know. I, I don't mean, know. Hey, I bought this by mistake. Would you guys want this? Uh, I don't know. Maybe I can give it to Richard. Give it to my neighbor. That'd be a nice neighborly oh, yeah. gift, right? Here you go. Hey, Richard, I bought this, not because I don't like it, but it was an accidental purchase. So, because I think that's important to say also. I bought this and it tastes like junk. Do you want it? Yeah, it may taste fine. I don't know. Yeah, it should. But, you know, you don't eat ice cream, Matt. This could be your little treatsy since it's frozen. You could put some strawberries on it and have your frozen yogurt. Could be your little... Dessert. Yeah, how does yogurt serve, like non-frozen, because like, this isn't yogurt that was designed to be frozen. How does yogurt freeze? Is it pretty spoonable? Or is it pretty I would solid? Think so. I would think it's more like a, I think it's going to melt fast, but, because we freeze gogurts. Right, that's what I was time. asking you. Yeah. It's solid enough that you can push it up. Gotcha, gotcha. Mm-hmm. But not but so solid it- that it's sealed permanently to the, uh, the thing. Right. You should be able to scoop it. Scoopy, scoopy. Scoopy, scoopy. I've got some frozen blueberries. Well, there you go. See, just throw it in the fro- throw it in your blender. Make a little smoothie. Oh, a smoothie. And then what else do I do? I put spinach in there? You could if you wanted to. Okay. You don't have to. Yeah, we've talked before, actually, about how I'm not much of a smoothie guy. I prefer to just eat the ingredients and not mm-hmm. d- dirty an additional dish. I was just thinking for a little treatsy. Little treatsy? Little treatsy. Mash it all up. Mm. Have you had any wine yet this uh, fall, Kate? I have not yet. Nope. Still no. Okay. Nope. Got to string together like five 60 degree days first. Right. Right. Yep. Have you? Have I? Had any wine? No, I have not. Sticking to beer? Are you doing? I'm mostly doing whiskey, whiskey these days. Yeah, I'm still yeah. staying strong with the uh, wild turkey over ice. Yeah, wild turkey over ice. Once, in, once in a while, a little tequila soda action. Pretty good. Uh, somebody said the other day we were talking about tequila and fresca. I was like, that sounds really good. Yeah, I used to do vodka fresca back in the day, but tequila fresca sounds pretty good. Hmm. Yeah. Good call. Yeah, I'd have to try that. Yeah, tequila soda with a splash of lemon juice is pretty good. Okay. Yeah, refreshing. Especially if it decides that it wants to be, you know, 80 a lot during the fall. Right. Yeah. Right. I still have quite a bit of beer and seltzers in my fridge right now. So I'm kind of like, okay, do we have to finish those before we get to the wine? Oh, really? 
I don't know. I haven't I haven't figured it out yet. You don't have any wine on hand? I've got a couple of bottles. Oh, okay. Do you need to get that? No. Okay. Just going to turn the sound off. You know, Microsoft Teams. Somebody's trying to chat with me, which is usually you. So it was kind of funny. Like, are you chatting with me while we're chatting? Not this time. Not this time. No, I've got some bottles in on the wine rack. I just uh, haven't felt the wine urge. And somebody was drinking wine the other day. And I was like, hmm, do I want that? What do you no, mean someone yet. was drinking wine the other day? I had a friend who was drinking some wine while I was drinking a seltzer. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> I was in the break room, Matt, and someone was drinking wine. Yeah, someone's drinking <laughs> wine somewhere. That's the name of a country song, isn't it? Oh, no, it wouldn't be wine. Yeah, you're right. Um, No, it just, it still hasn't, like, grabbed me, like, oh, yeah, gonna get a glass of red tonight. Time for some wine, yeah? Yeah. You need to be flanneled up? Maybe knee-high boots and puffy vest and... There you go. <laughs> just sitting on your couch in that garb. I was gonna say outside in front of the fire pit. Yeah. Hey, Kate, remember when I was talking about not feeling comfortable leaving my robot vacuum alone? Yeah. I want to be home. I don't feel comfortable doing the scheduling feature yet. And? It may have consumed an entire thing of fishing line yesterday. It was weird. It was making weird noises. And then it was like, can't find the dock. It's like, you can't find the dock. You know, it goes back to its little dock to charge. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, can't find the dock. What's going on over here? And I w- walked that way, and I was like, oh, no. So there was fishing line wrapped up inside the brush itself, around one of the wheels a little bit. But it only took me like 15 minutes or so to unwind it all. That's like cutting hair out of a regular vacuum. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so are we going to talk about fishing wire, fishing line being out? <laughs> Is this from all your weekends at the lake? Are you using it for some other purpose? Or It's up near my... So my uh, toolbox with like all my electronics stuff is all concentrated in one spot, like between my kitchen and my living room, you know, with the open floor plan. It's kind of pushed right. up against the wall. And apparently fishing string is up there and must have been, you know, because fishing string is like invisible. So it was probably hanging off the edge of that table forever. And then this uh, little robot vacuum got its, uh, got its it little down. wheels around it. Yeah. What do you use fishing line for with your electronics? Well, there's not just, it's like all my tools are there, not just oh, okay. the electronic stuff. I'm just wondering if you've got like a hack I need to know. Like, yeah, you just use fishing line and blah, blah, blah. Oh, I just okay. have fishing line for the times that I might need fishing line, which is never for actually fishing. Fishing. Okay. Which I feel like okay. you figured out the minute the story began. Like, he's not fishing. What's he doing with fishing? He's not fishing. Well, you go to the lake quite a bit. Maybe you're fishing. No, I, I don't. No fishing. Okay. But I do have this little game in my uh, living room. It's uh, ring on a string is what it's called, right? Okay. <laughs> There's this little hook that comes out of the wall. And then on that hook... And it's neutral mode is like a little key ring, right? That's tied to fishing line that goes up to the ceiling, right? And then so you can grab this thing and step back and you try to swing it along the string to get it to land on the hook. And so it's possible that that is the only reason why I have this fishing line. It might be that I bought this fishing line because I saw this game at a friend's house and wanted to install it at my own. There's a good chance that that's why I have it. Okay. But it's been a while that you don't even remember. I couldn't tell you the last time I... Yeah, because that thing's been set up for like 10 years. The okay. Ring on a String game has, but... Uh, I don't know what to say, Kate. I'm disorganized. Okay. But, no, but now it's uh, no longer stuck in your vacuum. Correct. I think I got all of it out. I was fairly shocked um, that I was able to unravel it. Luckily, that's one of the nice things about this robot. It's fairly easy to kind of get into it. You know what I mean? And then you were able to salvage the fishing line or no, just throw it away? No, trash can. Okay. Trash can. Do you think I should have kept it? 
No, I don't. I don't know if you're gonna go fishing. <laughs> Yeah, I thought, oh, you know what, since I've dealt with all this fish, since I successfully got this fishing line out of this vacuum cleaner, I now have confidence that I can go become a fisher person. A fisher person. There you go. Don't want to be gender normative, Kate. Nope. I'm going camping this weekend with the Girl Scouts. And uh, when you were talking about fishing, I'm like, yeah, we're not doing anything like that. Maybe think of all the camping things that we're not doing together. Yeah, do you get any more details on this? Because we were talking about it on yesterday's show. Do you get more details yeah. on this? We're going to be in a cabin. I know that. I looked at some pictures last night of what the cabin looked like. It it doesn't look like roughing it. So. Okay. It's, Looks yeah, pretty deluxe. I, I mean, it doesn't look deluxe, but it doesn't look like, whoa. I don't know. What, I don't Middle of the road. And I told Elliot, we got to get uh, sleeping bags. And she's like, I have a sleeping bag. I was like. You do? She's like, yeah, my Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I'm like, do you still fit in that thing? She's like, it'll be fine. I'm like, okay. Guess I'm not buying you a sleeping bag. Okay. So I have to buy myself a sleeping bag. How do you think that Ninja Turtles sleeping bag is going to turn out? You think she'll regret? I think she, because we'll be indoors, she'll be fine. If we were outside, I think she'd be like, uh, it's too short. Right, it doesn't go past my knees. Right. Have you seen those sleeping bags that look like mummies, though? They're shaped like the... the I, I could not... I think they're supposed to be the more professional sleeping bags, but I think I'd get too claustrophobic with my feet so tight. It's a professional not, sleeping bag? I mean, it looks like, you know, one of those, like, if you're going to really camp outside sleeping bags. Yeah. I just not typed just in like, sleeping bag mummy. Yeah? What'd you get? Uh, it looks like that's that might be what they're called. Really? Coleman 25F Mummy Sleeping Bag. Adult. Unisex. Size. Regular. Ozark Trail. 30F Mummy Sleeping Bag. Size. 87 inch by 33. It just looks like... Huh. I'm, I'm not necessarily claustrophobic about the top part that you can, you know, like... Peek through? Have a hood. But like the bottom part where your feet are so tight. It tucks you in. Yeah, I can do it. No, okay. Good thing I'm not professionally sleeping bag people. Yeah. Amateur sleeping bag. Right? Seemingly, yeah. For real. Any other exciting details about the uh, Girl Scout? Do you guys figure out if you guys are going to make some uh, Thin Mints or not? I don't think we're going to make Thin Mints. Okay. I think the uh, Girl Scouts Corporation would frown against that. Do you think so? Yeah, um, maybe. <laughs> um, but I don't know if there's like a fire pit where we go outside and sit around the campfire or, or what. So I talked to one of the moms the other day. I was like, listen, just give me a list. Tell me what you need. Give me a list. I'll get it. She's like, it's coming. Okay. The list is coming? The list is coming. The longer she takes to get it to you, you should be like, this is a limited time, time offer. Come on. No. Because I never make it to any of the meetings or anything. So I'm trying to be helpful. So if I can take something off her plate. I mean, that's nice. Yeah. Trying. <laughs> trying. Trying to be nice. I don't know if I'm like stressing her out more by saying, give me a list. You know, or it might be easier just do it on your own. Could be. It's like, well, I yeah. would rather just come have the list together at the last possible minute and get myself instead. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, I just know it's Saturday night, and I think we've got volleyball Saturday morning, hang out for a little bit, and then I think we have to hit the road for the camp. Are you going to try to tell any spooky stories, Kate, around the campfire? Uh, Probably not. At least bring a flashlight with you, and you can do the under-the-chin flashlight illumination move. Yeah, we do have one of those flashlight headbands, though. I thought that might be kind of scary, too. <laughs> You'd wear one of those and tell a ghost story? Or to blind children. Or just to blind the children? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I think a spooky story would be in order, Kate. Do the call that's coming from inside the house. Do that one. Are they going to understand what that means, though? Blow their mi- Blow their minds. I guess it would blow their minds if you described what exactly it meant. But All right. So there are these phones that were in the house. <laughs> uh, 
uh, it's, I think it's still, it would still work with a cell phone, maybe. Okay. okay. Oh, we did GPS tracking and that call's coming from inside the house. Ah! It's coming from your basement. Am I right? Yeah, there you go. See? But here's the thing. I don't want to wind up with like eight girls trying to sleep in my room and can't because they're scared and I'm the one who told the story. If you scare the children with a spooky story, you're obligated to have to comfort them for the night? Maybe. I mean, I'd have to comfort my kid, who's probably going to be one of the scaredy ones. She talks a big game, Bat, but she's uh, she's she scares easy, so which is kind of fun, kind of annoying. <laughs> yeah. Well, we were talking about horror films, right? And yeah. she was like, I want to watch it. Yeah. In which case, she's going to be like, I'm going to have nightmares. Great. You could tell the hook story. Remember the hook one? Scratching on the window? Something like that. I don't know. And then what? There ends up being a hook hanging off the car handle or something at the end of it, doesn't there? I don't know. Like the the hook person was coming at him and then they're like, oh, go, 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 go. And they just get away and rip the hook off the, oh, the, the gotcha. nub or whatever. I don't know. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Might have to look that one the up. The call is coming from inside the house is clearly clearly the one to tell, I think. Clearly the one. Right? Clearly. Is that the prototypical scary story for a child story, Kate? Uh, that, um, I'm trying to think if there's like real life scary stories that we could tell and then be like, what? I'm like, I could just, you know, paraphrase some date lines for him. Okay. Yeah, there you go. I just searched for spooky stories. Oh, because I'm curious, like maybe we could tell some spooky stories on the show, Kate. If we get some that are short enough. That's the thing with spooky stories. Aren't they like so long? Yeah. Did you ever read the R.L. Stein books? I did not. I remember in kids in my school. class did. Yeah, I did not though. You recommend? I used, to, I used to read those a lot when I was not goosebumps. I wasn't like in the, like I didn't see the show goosebumps, but all those R.L. Stein books. So it was like, a babysitter and then I'd go babysitting and then I'd like call my parents and be like, I think I heard a noise. And they're like, stop reading your book. Okay. Because you're reading R.L. Stein. R.L. Stein's getting you all paranoid. Yes. yes. Scared. Yeah, I remember a few girls in my class were kind of, was is that a girl focus series? I don't think so, right? I don't think so. Yeah, I don't I, think I thought so. it was gender neutral. Um, hmm. Spooky. All right, I'll look through some. I'll, we need to brainstorm because with Halloween approaching, we got to do more spooky things on the show, Kate. Could we do something spooky where our listeners win something by listening to the spookiness? Hmm. hmm. I don't know. You got some prizes you want to give away, Kate? Yeah, don't we have any of those deflated beach balls we could give away? <laughs> Maybe. Or some spatulas or. Spatulas. Yeah. Didn't we have Kjo spatulas? Uh, I would love it if we had Kjo spatulas, but no, we do not. Write that down. We should get Kjo spatulas. Yeah. We have the, the fun stainless steel therm- thermos thing. Those are nice. That's a hit. Yeah. Stainless inside and out. Pretty sweet. But I mean, like, let's get swag that people use. Not like ice scrapers. Spatulas. Yeah. Well, you could use a spatula as an ice scraper in a pinch. Maybe there should be some reinforced spatula. Now, I'm thinking of like a silicone or a rubber spatula. I wasn't thinking like a big old scrape your windshield spatula. I was like, get every last bit of the peanut butter out spatula. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's like a miniature spatula. Not necessarily. You think you can use a spatula that's meant for flipping a pancake into your peanut butter jar i don't i think we're talking about two different spatulas i'm saying not a pancake flipper i'm saying a peanut butter jar spatula peanut butter jar spatula yeah i buy big jars of peanut butter so it's not necessarily a mini spatula yeah it's not quite a spoon it's more of a yeah right yeah peanut butter spatula yeah but it's still wide you know Somebody I follow on Twitter a while back was like, this is the spatula you want to get for, oh, yep, here it is. I think this is it. Oxo Good Grips. Might be it. White silicone jar spatula. Perfect for reaching into jars of peanut butter. Mayonnaise, Kate. 
Yeah. Soft, comfortable, non-slip grip. This one goes for 30 bucks. That'd be some costly KJO swag right there, Kate. No kidding. Those are not what I'm talking about. <laughs> not the $30 ones. Oh, yeah. man. KJO OXO, not so much. How much peanut butter do you think you're really retrieving out of the out of that? Like, how many teaspoons full do you think when you're using a spatula? Once you're down to once you're down to silicone jar spatula amounts of peanut butter left in the peanut butter jar, Kate. Uh, as far as teaspoons, I don't know, but if I can still put it on the bread, I'm going to use it. Like, if it's not enough to spread on the bread. I wasn't trying to judge. I was actually just curious how much. Okay. It did sound kind of judgy. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I feel like that's your default um, mode is to take me as being judgy, but that may be well-deserved, well-earned, I guess, on my part. So, I mean, I don't, I just don't like wasting food. So we get every last drop. Okay. I was yeah. just curious if you could quantify how much you thought you got out of there. I mean, I historically have not thrown away and been like, eh, there may be a couple more teaspoons of peanut. I, I try to get it all out of there too, but. At some yeah. point, especially I don't have a dedicated peanut butter spatula. Um, I don't have a dedicated one. I was just trying to... Not a pancake spatula. <laughs> not a pancake flipper. Okay. Because we do have one of those. The big one. Yeah. It won't fit in the peanut butter. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great visual. I know. <laughs> oh. And see, I, I need to remember, though, that when you buy condiments like peanut butter, you probably don't buy the giant jug like I do because it's just you where I've got peanut butter for four people. So I'm like, we buy a lot of peanut butter. You buy it at Sam's? Yeah. Big old Mamma Jamma? Well, not the big old Mamma Jamma, but they are the larger. We, we get the natural peanut butter and they are two big, big jars and they come together. So is yeah. it, do you have to do like a big stir job on it each time? Mm-mm. It doesn't separate? Nope. nope. Oh, so is it not really like the real? At the beginning, you have to stir it up. Yeah. But yeah. You don't have to stir it up every time. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. I hear that natural peanut butter is the way to go. Many people say, no, it's a completely different food item than the uh, Peter Pan or Jif or Gif. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I could Oh, couldn't help it. Couldn't help it. I, but Skippy, is it Skippy or Jif? I, Jif makes a natural peanut butter that's really good. Oh, uh huh. That we used to do, um, but they don't have it at Sam's. So I get the Members Mark natural peanut butter. Mark, good old Members Mark. And natural peanut butter, the uh, sugar comparison to natural and regular, it's a huge jump. Yeah, there's a lot more in the regular stuff. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. I think it tastes just the same. That sounds good. Yeah, I could go for some peanut butter. Peanut butter's good. I had peanut butter toast this morning. It was fantastic. It was even crunchy peanut butter. Oh, crunchy on crunchy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, it's good. is it a special occasion in your household when crunchy peanut butter comes out, Kate? Uh, I'm the only one who eats it. So, no. Nope. My kids do creamy. I do crunchy. I think that there's something wrong with them. I kind of judge them a little bit, but it's fine. Suckers. Right. I feel like maybe we talked about peanut butter on this show before, have we? I feel like we have too. Outside of peanut butter cups, but Mm. I've gotten back and forth historically between crunchy and creamy. Yeah, I think we did talk about this because I said it can be challenging to spread uh, crunchy peanut butter across a piece of bread without tearing the bread. Yeah. That's not familiar. Sound familiar? Yeah, I think you're spreading too thin. I think that's your problem. Gotta spread thick. Yeah, you gotta have a way more peanut butter than you need. Double stuffed peanut butter. And then you scrape the excess back into the jar. Oh. But if you go excess onto the bread, huh. it doesn't rip your bread. That's a good tip, Kate. Yep. These I'm are the common sense that. tips that people come here for. I'm here to help. Yeah. Mostly, every once in a while, it seems like you're here to hinder, but most times... Every now and then. (laughs) Once in a blue moon. Is that one of those old people sayings? Once in a blue moon? Yeah. Huh. I shouldn't say old people. Old timey. Old timey? That's a good question. Maybe if I said once in a harvest moon, that might be more old timey. Probably, yeah. That's pretty old timey sounding. Yeah. 
Blue moon. You saw me standing alone. You remember that? I do remember that song. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't from our childhood, but. <laughs> A couple generations ahead of us. Yeah. I don't even know what that means, Matt. It's just a great song. Blue Moon's a good omen or something? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe that's why they've got a beer for it. Blue Moon. Oh, yeah. That's right. There's a beer for that. Do you like Blue Moon? Yeah. Blue Moon's pretty good. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. You? Yeah. You're on board with it? Yeah. Yeah. I think a Blue Moon, I think a Smurf, like if you're going to have a new Smurf, a Smurf arrives on a Blue Moon. Is that how that works? Do you remember the Smurfs? I do. Forget if Smurfette arrived on a blue on a blue moon. Hmm. I feel like I should know the th- the Smurfs theme song too. Or the kids? Remember they added the kids, the kid Smurfs toward the end of the series. Basically, the, yeah, co- the they, cousin Oliver equivalents. There, exactly. There have been some variations to the Smurfs since the Smurf movies, though, with people. So, what do you mean? I think the Smurfs that you and I grew up with, it's kind of changed a little bit with each uh, live action Smurf movie. They still have Brainy? Maybe. Oh. I think he was in one, but not in the next. What about Vanity? Vanity? Vanity still a character? Maybe. Smurfette for sure. Yeah. Papa for sure. Papa Smurf, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, but it's kind of gone back and forth. They're not my favorite movies. Yeah, I haven't seen any of them, but I watched that series a ton as a kid. Right? Yeah, I really did. Yeah, I would say don't waste your time on the movies then. Might ruin your your childhood memories. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Retroactively, my childhood was horrible. Oh, uh, these Smurfs suck. I thought I enjoyed my childhood. I thought I had a pretty happy childhood. But turns out, after seeing this Smurfs movie, not so much. With Neil Patrick Harris, I was wrong. <laughs> yep, NPH let me down. 